Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss casualty and theft losses. Now bear in mind, any losses incurred on personal use property. What's personal use property? Well, you might own a vehicle and you would use this vehicle to go to work every day, to commute to your job, to take your kids on vacation, to go shopping for grocery, to use it for your own enjoyment. That's a personal use property. Any losses incurred on personal use property is not deductible. However, if you incur a loss from that personal use property that's caused by fire, storm, a car accident, or by theft, that is deductible. And that's deductible from AGI, from adjusted gross income, sub subject to a threshold and floor. Now, bear in mind, between 2018 and, two th and 2025, that type of losses, personal casualty or theft losses, are deductible only if related to a federally declared disaster area. So if you lost a car in a federally declared disaster area, then it is deductible. If not, it's not deductible. Those losses are not deductible. However, we're going to have to learn about casualty and theft losses because they're going to be deductible fairly soon. Let's assume in June 20X4, a major thunderstorm caused a river flood that damages Noah's basement, leaving a $10,000 loss after insurance. Well, this loss is not deductible, assuming this is for personal use and assuming this is not a federally de de declared area. So the thunderstorm was not federally declared disaster. Now, if the flooded property is Noah's rental home, in other words, it's not for personal use, it's for rental income or for business income, the loss becomes deductible. However, if this is his, if, if this is Noah's personal home and this is what we're assuming, none of the losses are deductible. Now let's talk a little bit more about casualty losses. What are casualty losses? Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. An event must be identifiable. For example, a tornado occur. You have it damaged the property. So because of the tornado, the property was damaged and the damage was sudden, sudden, surprisingly, unexpected and unusual in nature. Usually, act of natures will fit this definition. In other words, the damage cannot be caused by the taxpayer willful act or negligence. So, so that's not that's not acceptable. For example, an auto accident, flood, hurricane, tornado, fire, earthquake, those are considered casualty losses. Let's take a look at events that are not considered based on court cases. So you might see this on your exam. Diseases and insect damages, those are not because they happen over time. Termite damage that happens over time. Decline in value of property as a result of landslide that destroyed neighborhood home. That happened over time. That is not, those are not sudden. Okay. Generally speaking, act of nature are casualty losses. How about theft losses? Well, for theft losses, well, we have, we have to have the theft to have occur. Well, obviously, something must be stolen. Could be larceny, embezzlement, and robbery. In other words, it's not misplaced. So if you misplaced an item and you lost it, that's not really theft. That's your negligence. When can you take the deduction? Timing of the deduction. The theft is the year of discovery because sometimes you might have a theft in year one and you may not discover it in year, unless year two and year three. You will take it in the year of discovery. Casualty loss, year of loss occurs. So the, for example, now bear in mind, for example, if the, if the casualty loss occur in year one, you're not going to file your return until year two. You will file it in year two for year one. Okay. Now you should not file a loss if you think you're going to be getting the money back from the insurance. If, if insurance is expected to recover the loss, don't file, don't claim the loss. Okay. And if you do, then you get the money, then you have to use the tax benefit rule. Now, if the insurance does not fully recover you, then whatever is left, you can make a claim. Now, casualty losses, 
bear in mind in a disaster area declared by the president you can file in the same year so usually let's assume the now the casualty occurred in year one and if the area is considered by the federal government a disaster area then you will be able to file that same year and get a get some type of a relief to alleviate the pain they allow you to do that let's take a look at an example one of adam's delivery vehicle was stolen from his garage april 20x3 he found out about the theft may 6 which is next the following month and adam filed an insurance claim which was settled february 15 20x4 if adam believes recovery is likely simply put if adam believe he's going to recover the, whatever he lost no deduction should be permitted in 20x3 because the insurance they're going to get their money back if the insurance payout is less than the vehicle fair market value or adjusted basis a partial deduction may be claimed so if the insurance did not cover everything then a partial deduction can be claimed however if adam used this vehicle for personal use no deduction applies unless we are outside those years you know in 26 27 that that type of deduction is allowed again subject to certain limitation which we'll talk about shortly but again for now casualty and theft losses they are not allowed for personal use property unless it's a federally declared disaster area what is the amount of loss that you can deduct for casualty and theft losses well we compute this differently for business property or income producing property versus personal use let's look at business or income producing property if the asset is completely destroyed so if the asset is stolen it's completely destroyed or if it's totally destroyed it's completely destroyed what is the amount of the loss the amount of the loss is your adjusted basis of the property obviously minus any insurance so if you receive any insurance you have to reduce your loss if the asset was partially destroyed it means you have a vehicle it's destroyed but not totally destroyed how much can you can you and again this is a business vehicle or income producing vehicle how much is the loss the loss is the lower the lesser of the adjusted basis or the fair market value before and after which is the difference between those two it means what was the reduction in the fair market value and obviously whatever the amount in one or two then you subtract the insurance because the insurance would lower your losses because you are recovering your losses let's take a look at this example the flood totally damaged adams and insures business equipment it was valued at eight thousand dollars that's the fair market value it what it it means totally totally destroyed it means the value of this is zero now so the reduction in fair market value equal to eight thousand the adjusted basis the adjusted basis is twelve thousand Adam is entitled to an $8,000 loss. Why? Because we're going to take the lower of the adjusted basis, which is 12,000, and the reduction in fair market value, which equal to 8,000. Now, obviously, if Adam received any insurance proceeds, let's assume the insurance recovered $3,000, then the losses will be what's left is 5,000. And obviously, since this is a business, business, business equipment, the the deduction is for AGI okay let's look at another example Adam's business car uninsured was damaged in a crash it was it has a pre-accident market value of 13,000 adjusted basis of 11 post-accident fair market value of 7 well the adjusted basis equal to 11 before and after it went down the reduction in fair market value equal to 6,000 which of the two we will take the lower of the two is 6,000. Adam's deductible loss is 6,000, which is the smaller of the adjusted basis or fair market value decrease considered as a deduction for AGI unless we have any insurance proceeds. How about the amount of loss for personal use property? Remember, personal use property is suspended between 2020, 2018 and 2025. So it doesn't differentiate between complete and partially destroyed, okay? The loss is the lesser of the adjusted basis or the reduction in fair market value now bear in mind you always have to reduce the with the insurance and here you have to reduce the insurance whether the insurance was recovered or could have been recovered what does that mean here's what happens sometimes you get into a, a car accident like usually a fender bender on the highway and the person that you know hits the car they would say look please don't claim file don't claim an insurance against me okay don't file a claim 
I'm willing to pay for your damage. That's it. Don't. Now, obviously, you did not file a claim, but the assumption is you would have to reduce your losses as if you have filed the claim. Okay. Why? Because the government don't, don't want to subsidize your decision. Because you could have recovered some of these losses, but you chose not to. You would assume that you filed the claim and how much you would get from that claim. Okay. There's also a $100 floor per event. So, so, for, so, so for something to be deductible, it has to be more than $100. Otherwise, there's a floor of $100. So if the loss is less than $100, it's not even a loss. Okay. And also, your losses has to be greater than 10% of your adjusted gross income. So the amount has to be decent to be deductible. Okay, and this the reason for these floors and limitations is to do what? Is to avoid abuse by the taxpayer. If if that's not the case, then guess what? Any theft losses, any theft losses, they, you will file a claim on your tax return. Well, it has to be large enough that's higher than ten percent of your AGI, and the loss by itself it has to be more than one hundred dollars. Let's take a look at an example to see how it works. In twenty X three, Adam with an AGI of forty thousand lost all his apartment's furniture in a flood within a federally declared disaster area. So here, federally declared disaster area, yes, we're gonna have, we're gonna be able to take the deduction. The furniture has a mere fair market value of 15 and an adjusted basis of 12. It was completely destroyed. So the fair market value went from 15,000 down to zero. His insurance compensated him for $6,000. How much is his deduction? Well, let's see how do we work this problem okay it's it's uh, is it an, a casualty and theft loss yes it's a flood that's the first thing is it deductible yes in a federally disaster area here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take the lower of the the reduction in fair market value or the adjusted basis adjusted basis equal to 12 the reduction in fair market value went from 15 to 0 equal to 15,000 what do we start with we choose the lower of these two 12,000 then the insurance recovered half of that. 12,000 minus 6,000, we're left with 6,000. Then this is one event, we're gonna deduct the $100, we're left with 5,900 in losses. Is this the amount deductible? No. The amount deductible, it's gonna be, it's gonna have to exceed 10% of AGI. 10% of adjusted gross income is 4,000. So now, what's the amount that exceed 5,900 exceed 10% of AGI by how much? By 1,900. Therefore, the loss is 1,900, okay? So we're gonna choose the lesser of adjusted basis or the decrease in fair market value, the adjusted basis. We're gonna deduct the insurance because the insurance would give us back 6,000, so we cannot claim the loss because we're getting the money back, minus this $100 floor per event, minus 10% of adjusted gross income, okay? Remember, this deduction is from adjusted gross income. It's from AGI, not for AGI, okay? Because this is a personal apartment furniture. Personal casualty gains. Hold on a second. Could you have a gain with personal casualty? Yes, you could have a gain. When would that gain happen is when your insurance proceeds are greater than your adjusted basis. So an exception to the general rule allows a taxpayer to use personal use, personal casualty losses, not tied to a federally declared disaster area to offset casualty gains. So if you have casualty gains where the insurance proceeds were greater than the adjusted basis, and this could happen, if you have a gain, then you are allowed to take the gains and offset them against casualty losses because it's not fair. Something happened, you are not expecting it, and as a result, you have a gain. Well, it's taxable unless you have some other personal casualty losses, you can offset them against each other. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a netting process. So you're going to net all personal casualty and theft gains or losses for the year, you combine them and you're going to either have a net gain or a net loss. Either when you net them, you either have a net gain or a net loss. If you have a net gain, the net gain are treated as capital gain and included in the capital gain, capital loss netting process. If you have a net loss and assuming it's, an, it's, it's not in a federally declared disaster area, then the loss is not deductible. Okay, so what, why, is, why this special rule exists? This exception exists. In case you have a gain, it's unfair 
because you you didn't you didn't want to you didn't want this event to happen it's outside your control now you have to pay taxes on it we'll say look if it happened you have a gain see if you have personal casualty losses although it's it's not in a federally dis declared disaster area you could still net them out okay but at the end if you have a gain you still have to treat the gain as a capital gain but at least you reduced it if you have a loss assuming not federally declared disaster area not deductible what should you do now for casualty and theft losses go to farhat lectures and look at additional mcqs that's going to help you understand this topic whether you are a cpa exam candidate whether you are an accounting student or studying for your enrolled agent exam you need to understand this topic good luck study hard and of course stay safe